The world might be going crazy, but it's all good in the garden. Let's take a tour. Hello, Huntsteaders. So today is Tuesday, January 12th, 2020. Here we are at the garden, me and Smokes. I thought I would do a garden tour. I've been doing so much work the last few weeks in this garden that it's crazy. Those of you who have watched this channel before know that I've lived here for, well, we're starting our sixth year. So I've lived here five years now. And this used to be a playground over here. Or a, um, really it was um, a batting cage. Uh, the previous owner here was a professional baseball player. He had a couple of kids who uh, he was teaching the sport. He had a little batting cage with a net back there, AstroTurf down below. You can see some of my earliest videos. And in fact, this swing set, which houses my ladies, good morning ladies, was actually back here in the batting cage playground area. So here we are. Let me just start off with my, this original veg drug here came from my first house. So I've had this thing of six years now. It's starting to get a little, looks a little weathered down underneath. I'm waiting for the bottom to break out of this thing someday. But as you can see, it still puts forward good plants. I got some lettuce in here, some radishes. This tomato is left over from the uh, winter and it's still producing. I'm picking little tomatoes off of it every day. A couple down there. It's called a Little Bing Patio Tomato or Bush Tomato. And it's doing great, still producing. Get some broccoli here, some bok choy, Chinese cabbage, some different lettuces here, and a little stevia. Mm. Great little sweet plant right there. I got my Jack and Jill, or Hansel and Gretel eggplants over here. They come in a white variety. Not sure which one's Hansel and which one's Gretel. In a purple variety, and this thing, oh, this is Hansel here, so the Gretel's the white one produces like crazy it's been here since the summer i'm overwintering them and they're still pr producing this little veg truck also came from my first house my first garden and i use it for little stuff i have some kale in here some lettuce spinach a couple of radishes just stuff to augment my salads with over here I decided this year, I used to just pop my peppers out, but this year I'm kind of trimming them back and I'm going to overwinter them and see if they'll produce. So I had some great producing prep peppers this year. I got a baby cabbage over here. I had some bug issues with these guys earlier, but uh, they're doing great now. I got another one on the other side I'll show you. A little sweet pea here. Look at these fava beans. So I have fava beans. These things are just the meatiest thickest beans they grow these huge pods and I have another favorite bush over here and I love those things so I have some beets in here some lettuce some spinach a couple of different sweet pea varieties this one's not really growing as quickly as I'd like and one over here some more beets I did a video on this um, planter here I got this thing at Home Depot and it's been working great one full year under the belt Here's a couple more self-watering containers. So anybody who's watched my videos knows that uh, these sun gold tomatoes are Mrs. Huntstead's favorite tomatoes. And I usually keep them over the winter because they continue to produce. So every day I'm picking these things here and there, augmenting the tomatoes from the first, first veg drug and the tomatoes on here that are continuing to grow. Here's another little baby cabbage head starting to form. I'm excited about that. Then in the center of the garden, I have three half wine barrels and then this little couple little uh, planters over here. So this one's sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes and green onions back here. Got a couple of artichokes in here and I have a Brussels sprout trying to compete for space down there. Those things are doing well. You hear some of my peppers. So this guy's a habanero. And these puppies are hot. So this year I'm going to start getting into habaneros or, or hot peppers. I just got back from a trip to the Bahamas. I got exposed to goat peppers. 
I'm gonna grow some of those, maybe do some hot sauce and stuff. Last year, we had this Thai pepper plant, which produced like crazy. Every one of these little sticks was a pepper. And I turned it back to overwinter it, and I made uh, chili powder out of them. They're fantastic. Much better than the ones you buy in the store. A little sweet pepper down here produces those little yellow orange peppers. So I'm keeping it. I have a little raspberry bush here, and I'm gonna do some things with raspberries I'll show you elsewhere in the garden. But uh, this guy just stuck in a pot. It's supposed to get like three feet tall. I don't know, I may transplant it over in the back of the garden over here and I'll show you where uh, now that I have a spot opened up for it. I have a couple of these heirloom tomatoes that I just kept growing. They're not the best fruit on this thing, but uh, they crack like crazy and everything. But like, look at this guy right here. Pretty good size and you know, these things turn like kind of an orange and green color. Some type of Russian heirloom tomato. One thing that went crazy this winter is my parsley. Here's my Italian broadleaf parsley. Look at that. Mm, fantastic. Just growing in a little potato bag. It's unbelievable. And over here, in my second veg drug, look at this curled parsley. It's unbelievable. I mean, we eat out of this thing almost every day. I put it on everything. And it's just, it's the biggest. I've never had this much success with parsley. Usually I grow them in little containers over in my herb garden over there. But I decided to stick some in here, and these things have been great. So what else have I got in here? Well, I got some Brussels sprouts. Look at those guys forming down there. I'm excited about that. Some more Chinese cabbage, some lettuce, kale, tree collards. Look at these broccoli heads. Getting ready to... Pick some of those pretty quick. Look at them. Broccoli, you just kind of kind of watch. I got three heads on there. You got to watch them, broccoli and cauliflower, because if you don't get them, they start really splintering and going to seed quickly. So I just watch them. When they start separating a little bit, I'll cut them. What is this guy over here? I think this is broccoli too, if I remember correctly. I know I got a tag in here for it somewhere. I don't know where it is. And then I have some kohlrabi down here. I'm excited about those guys. Look at that kohlrabi. It's called a quick star kohlrabi. It's kind of like a cabbagey, radishy type of a plant. I got some more of them in the garden too, I'll show you. So that's a very full productive veg drug here. And then behind it, I did a video on this too. This is the planter box that I made. It's just one big square box. I put these tomato, this tomato plant in here last summer. It is still producing. I mean, you can see these guys are just starting to blush a little bit red. About halfway there. Over in the back there, we've got a few that are getting ready to pick. And it just keeps producing, so I'm going to leave it here all winter. I have some lettuce varieties here. And a bunch of green onions, and then two peppers that really did well for me last year. I just chopped them back uh, for the winter. This one's getting overgrown by green onions, but they produced really well, so I'm just going to leave them and see if I can get them to produce again. Then back here in my Australian, uh, I forget what the name of this company was called, but it's a metal galvanized container raised bed planters. This one's my salad garden. It's all a bunch of, well, I have a cabbage in here and some radishes. Radish, radish here. But the rest of them are just uh, leaves I use for the garden. So I come out here, pull some leaves from here, pull some leaves from here, pull some leaves from there. Next thing you know, we got a salad. Next to it, I have a bunch of good uh, winter vegetables. Look at these broccolis. Um, I'm sorry, cauliflowers. Three heads growing in there, a little one down there. Got some more kohlrabis here, but these are a purple kind of kohlrabi. And I have some cauliflower over here. Look at those guys. Some broccoli. That one's already starting to split, so I need to pick that thing today. Or are these, maybe that's broccolini. Yeah, it's, it's broccolini. So it's supposed to look like that, but I gotta get on it because it'll start to flower pretty quickly. Once this, once the heads start separating like that, it's gonna go to flower. Then I have some cabbage down the center, and that thing's coming together pretty well. Over here in the pumpkin patch, or the cornfield, depending on what I use it for, I also placed a bunch of winter vegetables. So we have 
several different types of, of uh, cauliflower in here. I have asparagus over there, that little green thing. It hasn't done well, but everything else, the broccoli, the cauliflower, the artichoke, and the Brussels sprouts, everything's done really well back here. So here's another thing I was talking about. So last year we put some roses in along the edge of the property, and I have a spot over here, and I might put that raspberry bush that was in the front right here in the ground because I can just tap into the hose here for water and I've done that in a couple other places so over here in the corner behind the windmill I have a raspberry born or boin and uh, it's supposed to get three to four feet high and produce for me and then this is my golden raspberry that I had in a, a planter box last year and it produces these great golden little fruits. So I put it also back here in the garden, uh, right next to my composter. And then on the other side, this guy was in this container here last year, and it's a bushel berry baby cakes raspberry. And it produces these nice, sweet little red fruits. So I'm gonna start working on doing more with raspberries this year in the garden. I'm excited about that. Then my blueberries. Got a couple more peppers over here. I think that's my jalapeno. I got a couple of my blueberry bushes here in the corners or on the side here. This one's loaded with flowers, or it was loaded with flowers. So I'm expecting it to fruit here pretty quickly. It must be an early fruiter or it's tricked by the crazy weather we're having. Then as far as the orchard goes, well, let me show this here. So this is the fourth year on this Turkish eggplant. And this thing keeps producing like crazy. I love these eggplants. They look a little bit like a tomato, but they're great. They're not bitter. It produces like crazy. We use them all the time. A little lime tree back here. So let's look at the orchard. My, Apple tree, I mean my orange tree up front is producing like crazy. These things are sweet and tremendous. And I got them all over the place. So back here, just the other day, I've had bananas on the property for like four years now. Never got them to fruit. This guy was in this container right here. And I took it out the other day and I put him in the ground. He's got a couple of pups growing. This is my last uh, effort at growing bananas. I had a couple of, uh, in this uh, spot here, we had an avocado tree. I've tried four or five different avocados over the year. Every one of them died. This one that was here last year was doing fabulous. And then we hit, we hit that hot spell. Now I was watering it every day and everything else and it dried up like a cinder and just died. So I got rid of it. I put the bananas here. This is a sunny area. It's got the wall back here that can reflect heat. Um, I've got water going to it. I have a little sprinkler system, right, a little sprinkler head right down here in the ground. You can see it right there. So there should be no excuse for this thing not to produce. And if they don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I have the main plant and a couple of pups shooting up right now. So I should get hopefully a good little productive banana patch out of here. We'll see. If anybody has any suggestions on why I'm not getting fruit, let me know. I did a video on this baby. It's dormant, of course. This is my fruit salad, uh, stone fruit tree. What do we got on here? Babcock white peach, Santa Rosa plum, Fantasia nectarine, and an Alberta peach. So they all fruit at different times of the year. I just put that thing in last year. I'm looking forward to see how that thing produces. And down here, I have a little raspberry bush. Look at that. Continuing my raspberry theme. Look at these guys. They're all ready to pick. I'm going to try that guy right now. Yes, I am. Mm. Don't tell Mrs. Hunstead. Mm. That was delicious. Delicious. I can't wait to have about four different raspberry plants this year. All right. Let's go further into the orchard. So here's my apricot tree. We're getting some cool weather, so I'm hoping we'll have some apricots this year. Two seasons ago, we were inundated with apricots. Last year, eh. We got about maybe a quarter of the fruit and they were about half the size but apricots off the tree man they are unbelievable my 
uh, first apple tree here, I did a lot of pruning this year. And this one, this thing was all, they were all growing into each other. And it looks awkward here now because I cut some of these branches out that were filling in this area. But I'll let this one grow up and you can already see I have a couple of shoots going. Kind of fill the tree out on this side, but keep it a little bit separate from the apricot. And as you can see, it hasn't hurt the plant. It is a load of little apples. January 12th, look at these guys. They're fantastic too. I'm gonna pick that guy. Oop. Here we go. Give that guy a bite. Look at the color on that thing. January 12th, eating apples off of my tree. Oops. If I could hold it in my hand long enough. Yeah, sure. That's a good apple. A little tart, but good. Here's my second orange tree. We haven't started pulling off of these yet because usually they take a little bit longer to ripen than the other tree. These guys are ready to go and are sweet. I'm going to give these guys maybe to the end of January and start picking them and they'll be fantastic. So over here I have my two figs. These guys used to be in containers. This is a yellow long neck fig and you can see I got new growth coming out everywhere on the ends. And this is a tiger stripe fig. I also have new growth. I just put this guy in the ground. He was in a pot over in the corner of the garden. So I'm hoping he does well over here. And then this guy is my donut. I think it's a Babcock, a Saturn donut peach. We had these last year. They were unbelievable. This little tree had like eight fruit on it. And so this is the first full year in the ground. Looking forward to see what that produces. This is my second apple tree here in the corner. So I did some major trimming. This thing was out of control. It was as big as this tree. And I just wanted to trim it back. The stuff at the, on the top of that, you could never get the fruit up top. It was too high. It would just rot up there, fall on the ground, attract squirrels and rats. So I trimmed it way back. We'll see what happens. I'm not expecting a lot of fruit on it this year. Um, but by next year, it should be great. I really trimmed back my nectarine tree here too. I trimmed that thing by half and it's growing back. We'll see how it produces this year. I don't see a lot of fruit on it, but it, it, it produced like crazy the last couple of years. But again, it was so big, uh, I, I just needed to prune it. Same thing with my grapefruit tree. I pruned that thing way back, but as you can see, Got plenty of grapefruits on this baby. And this thing, last year, the grapefruits I had on, I had so many grapefruits. And these things stay on this tree forever. I mean, they'll go through till early August and still be good. And then we have our lemon tree, and we trimmed that a couple of years ago. I could probably get up top and trim a little bit of that off, but it's still producing. So everything's looking good here in New Orchard. Very happy about uh, the progress and excited about some of these new things we have growing this year out here. All right. So this back section over here and our little food garden, look at, so I have a bird up there. My bird bath is fantastic. I got so many birds. I have bluebirds that come here every single day and use that bird bath. We used to have these blueberries over here where the bird bath is. We got them out of there. We're just gonna turn this mostly into ornamental plants. I do have my honey jar jujube right here, which I love that tree. Looks like nothing in the winter time, but it does produce every year. So I'm excited about that. Okay, over here at the shed, I got my strawberries. What do we got in here? Look at this guy's producing some good berries already right now. Look at that. A few of them in here. And I got some more strawberries over here. These guys are producing. And I have a lime tree. The limes on this tree, there's still one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven limes on this little thing in this pot. And we picked limes like crazy last year on that thing. Very happy about that tree. Whatever we're doing, it likes it. This is my little bench where I kind of put starters or some of our herbs. I have some chives here. I just made these the other day. 
some cilantro. This is an ice cream bean seed that I got from Maui Seeds. And here are two more. I don't know what happened to this guy, but it looks like it's dead. These two are still going. I transplanted it from a pot like this into a bigger pot. Maybe it was too soon. So we'll see. This is, I forget what these things are called, uh, Barbados cherry. And I've had that thing in a little pot, and my wife's like, you know, maybe it's root bound. It does get these little teeny fruits on it that are edible. So we've transplanted it to this. This used to have a blueberry bush in it. And already it's gotten great growth, and uh, we've gotten some good flowers on it already, even though you don't see many right now. So we'll see how that thing grows. I got this little tomato recently. It's a little black cherry tomato and it does produce. So usually uh, tomatoes are a summer plant, but I've got a couple of them still producing over there in the garden, and this guy's producing. I have some mint here, some more parsley, but who needs this guy when you got that mass of parsley over there in the garden? Some herbs. We, uh, we dry this oregano. I'll, take, I'll cut these things off, put them in my dehydrator, and make our own oregano. And this is my Miwa kumquat. These things are fantastic. It's a little plant and we've got what maybe 20 fruit on it, but they're really good. So we have two more kumquats over here and the steps are then you can see they're producing like crazy. These guys are really sour. They're the, um, uh, I forget the, the main kumquat that you can get out here, but they're pretty sour and then they, but they produce like crazy. They start sour and get a little sweet. The Miwas are a little more sweet all the way around. So I prefer these guys, but my wife loves these guys. And this guy producing pretty good. A lot of these guys are starting to turn color. You know, look at all the fruit on there. And here's his uh, sibling. This, these guys are a little bit ahead as far as production goes, but like this guy right here, I'll try that guy. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Nice and sour in the beginning. And then as you chew it, it sweetens up. Love my kumquats. Over here in the corner, this is the fourth or no, the fifth year we put this passion fruit tree in right after we moved in. Primarily to cover up this fence that's falling apart back here. I just paid a guy a down payment. We're gonna at least replace this strip. So I'm gonna have to do something back here on this side uh, to remove it off the fence. I wanna save as much as we can, but you can see these passion fruits that are hanging off the other side. These guys are ripening down here. Look at those guys. And this thing produces every year. Here's some more. I get two um, harvests out of it. One in the spring and one in the fall. And we've got fruit all over it right now. They're, a lot of them are the same color, so you can't really see, but I mean, they're everywhere. We love passion fruits. My wife and daughter heat them straight up. I usually use them in protein drinks. Look at the size of this guy. And they started off small, but now they're getting to be big size plants or um, fruits, and they're tasty. So maybe I'll document how we try to salvage most of this. I mean, it's kind of intertwined into that fence, so I'm hoping I can lift a lot of this up and maybe separate it from the fence. But at any rate, the vast majority of it, it's rooted right here, so we'll be able to save most of it. And then when the other fence gets in, we can drip it over the top. But passion fruits, man, they produce like crazy. I've got a couple of papayas down here. Just planted them this year. So they're about double the height of when I put them in. We'll see what happens with these guys. I had a papaya before, and it, uh, it would flower, but never set fruit. So I got two of them here, and I'm hoping with our pollinators on site, we can get these guys to, to fruit. So, up until yesterday, I had this pineapple guava that you see here in the yard in this bucket. And last year, the, two years ago, it produced fruit for us, and last year it didn't. And um, turns out the thing was root bound. My wife suggested that we ought to move it. And I thought, well, why not? I got this big lawn over here that we don't use for anything. So 
I cut a spot in there yesterday and put it in the ground. And I put that little plastic ring around there just because I want to reestablish the grass from the big hole that I cut in it. And I'll probably pull that planting ring out. Maybe plant some flowers around there or something. But I'm hoping that thing will produce a little better here. It's going to get plenty of water and plenty of pollination from the little pollinators back here, one of whom bit me yesterday when I was planting that tree. So over here outside the Kaczynski cabin, this is where I had my bananas. And I moved them from the cornfield back in the corner where I had them for about three years that they never fruited. Well, one, they fruited one time, but it didn't develop. And then they've been in here for two years and they never fruited. So I pulled them out, started that banana grove back behind the, um, the trash cans in the corner of the orchard. And we'll see, that's the last run for bananas. They're gonna have to produce there or they're out of the garden. But I have some mulberry bushes over here in the corner. I just put those in two years ago. So I'm hoping maybe we can get some fruit or last year, maybe I put them in. I'm hoping to get some fruit. And I'll probably put some blueberry bushes here. And I have some blueberry bushes here outside my office. These guys produced pretty well last year. And these are pink lemonade blueberries. They don't produce that well, but they're different and tasty. So, and then this guy's my pomegranate. We've had a couple of different, pomegranates for us have been a little bit like avocados. We always get them to flower and even set fruit and then they drop off. So we put this guy here. I'm just gonna kind of keep it trimmed back and hopefully we can get it to produce. It seems like pomegranate is producing California everywhere but in my yard. So we'll see. Then this is the beginning of my herd garden. Look at that rosemary. I mean, we just come out and pick this stuff and use it for cooking like crazy. My wife started a, uh, a lavender um, garden back here. She's got all different types and they're doing really well. And then this is our lavender, our, our herb garden right outside the kitchen. So got some strawberries up here, tarragon, cilantro, mint, more rosemary. This rosemary bush has been here forever. I mean, it, this came from our old house and it's basically uh, the roots in that entire pot are made up of that rosemary bush. But we, we just come out and I got three different types of strawberries here. I gotta clean these up, pull some of these old ones out. And of course it's early for strawberries anyway, but I wanna make sure that those guys are producing this year. We have some sage over here and this whole area here is all herbs. So if we need them, we come out here and we pick them. And uh, it's great having our own herb garden. Some of them we dry. I'm looking forward to drying up some of that chamomile, German chamomile right there for, for tea. Uh, we had a big lemongrass thing over here that uh, Mrs. Hunstead pulled out this year to put some other herbs in and we used we dried those and she makes lemongrass tea for us. It's fantastic. So, and then over here in our little poolside garden, we've got some dragon fruit. Put to, uh, one in over here, and then one in over here behind the uh, garden angel. And who knows if these guys are gonna fruit or how, but we got them in here. We have uh, purchased some, garden, some dragon fruit at the store and it's great. So we thought, well, why not? See if we can grow it. So that's kind of it at the moment. That is the update on the garden at the front of the, or in the back of the house. I'm really excited about what we're going to have going on back here. I think it's going to be a great year. And that's what the amazing thing is about gardening, is every year you can do something new. You never know what's going to grow for you. I mean, if you just said I'd have had these two tomatoes, these Russian heirloom tomatoes still producing in January, I'd have thought you are crazy. But I got two of them still producing, and it's just fantastic. So that's it. That's the garden tour uh, as it stands right now in January of 2021. Thanks for watching.